And today I wanted to talk about, obviously, 9-11. I know this is going to be coming out a little bit later than 9-11, but the big things that that happened during that day and why life insurance is important. Just for example, let's say, you know, weird things can happen and crazy things can happen, whether we hop on a plane, we get in a car, anything of that nature. So in my opinion, and life insurance is important at every age. And the earlier we get it, the less expensive that it is and the better coverage we can actually get. So, you know, when we're sitting there thinking about all the lives that were lost on 9-11, you know, how many of those people actually did have life insurance coverage to take care of their families after they were gone? Even if they were single, they still had probably some family or some friends that either needed a memorial, a burial, or anything like that. There, ha- You know, where does that money come from? And that's where life insurance really kicks in. So for a small amount per month or a year or however you wanted to set up the payment plan, you can get coverage for when basically anything happens. If we take COVID into play, all the people that passed away from COVID, you know, weren't expecting to die with COVID. But if they had life insurance, life insurance, and we're talking regular life insurance, not accidental death, is going to make sure that you're covered in case something like that happens. That's why we can't stress enough the importance of life insurance. Even if it's a small amount, just get you buried or have your ceremony or however you would like your final wishes to be. Things like that are huge. So just for example, let's say somebody in your family passed away and there was no money. Now all of a sudden somebody's going to come up with money to pay for a funeral or a ceremony or cremation or how much it ever costs. I mean, cremation's not free and putting you in the, in the casket's not free as, as well. You know, that does cost money. So why do we want to put the financial obligation on our loved ones? or or friends or let's say extended family when we have the ability to take care of that ourselves now things happen in life insurance so we have you know in our life so with life insurance we have to make adjustments like beneficiaries or you know we moved things of that nature there's always going to be changes in our life and life insurance is no different you know we make less money when we're younger we make more money as we go on so therefore we need more coverage we didn't have kids when we were younger now we have kids we weren't married when we were younger now we're married so there might have to be some additions to it. Life insurance does just not mean you have to buy one policy and that's all you get all your life. You can have multiple life insurance policies. And in fact, a lot of the wealthy, if you're looking to build wealth, have life insurance policies as part of their portfolio. As there are a lot of programs within our life insurance where it can actually make money and never lose money in the market. So it's another investment opportunity along with the death benefit the whole time along. Now, I understand people put money in IRAs and put people put money in 401ks and 403bs, but have you put money into life insurance? The one thing that will pay out, for example, let's say you got in a car accident six months afterwards. Well, in six months, I know we didn't put a lot of money in that IRA, but in that life insurance policy, we had a death benefit in case the absolute worst happened. Nobody wants to think about it. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's one of those things that should be like having electricity. Make sure that your family or loved ones or friends or whoever is handling business is going to be able to take care of it for you. What would happen if, for example, you just had friends and you didn't have any family, they didn't have any money to bury you or they didn't have any money for that? What would happen then? That's a serious question. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of views on the afterlife or after death and so to speak, you know, and what happens. But it's also stressful for all the people you've left behind. And you want to make sure that you have as, you take care of them as much as you possibly can. They're going to have to go through some things. So why put the burden of finances on them as well? So with 9-11 going on and all the stories I watched you know, for 9-11, and then, of course, with COVID been going on now for a year plus, you know, a lot of times people ask, well, is it covered if I die from COVID? Yes. Um, they're going to cover you if you die from COVID as long as we don't have an accidental policy because an accidental policy is just like it states. It's only if it was an accident. It's not due to older age or cancer or things of that nature. Those are illnesses and not covered under the accidental. So we just want to make sure that you have yourself protecting your loved ones. Not only that, if you do, if you did happen to go unexpectedly, could you imagine the huge burden of relief? would be off of their shoulders knowing the fact that your income's not coming into the family anymore. 
You know, we want to make sure that we take care of them to the best of our abilities. No, we don't want them to live in Beverly Hills in a $20 million mansion, but we do want to make sure they can stay as close to their current lifestyle as possible to keep everything seamless for them. So I wanted to thank you for joining me on this episode of Doing Insurance Right. As always, if you could rate, review, or subscribe to whatever great platform you're listening on, whether it be uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or any of the other great ones out there, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.